Hello there folks and welcome back to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I have another shop video here. Right now I am doing some emergency uh, repairs to the Flash Forge printer. Currently this is my uh, only working printer here at the moment. The power bot, I'm still waiting on a couple more parts to come in through, uh, through the mail before I can actually get uh, working on the uh, third lead screw. Got the actual lead screw in today but I'm missing the actual belt to uh, basically put fashion all the lead screws and the motors together so they're all in uh, sync with each other but unfortunately uh, as I was going to fix a jam last night in the uh, left extruder I accidentally shoved my allen key through the fan and knocked some blades out but the uh, these fans have been uh, kind of acting up the actual cooling fan I had on it which um, had this duct which is seriously seen some uh, heavy use it um yeah it died on me so I was it was producing really crappy quality so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to a uh, 50 millimeter radial. I think that um, most cooling setups should go to this. I've seen some compressed like some uh, diaphragm pump setups which I want to try in the future, but they're kind of cost prohibitive at the moment until I can find a, a cheap supplier or a cheap uh, supplier source for them. But this uh, so yep I got this cool little duct that I printed out here. Fortunately I printed out all right just before hell broke loose and everything but yep uh, another thing I want to do of course is I want to uh, put these DuPont connectors on the ends of the fan connections for all three fans so if I need to take any of them off I don't have to worry about having them run while I'm servicing the printer because especially if we're moving a jam like I have to keep the hot end uh, going and the hot end fan will usually try to spin up but uh, yeah, it's, that's the reason why it broke in the first place. And of course, it's such a pain dealing with it, like rattling and almost chopping off, and trying to chop off my fingers as I'm uh, working on it here. So I'm gonna just make some quick disconnects on the end so I can just service it with ease. Got all the connections here, pink gaff tape, the, uh, the busted fan connector. And of course, that's the uh, old cooler fan, which I think is busted. Hope the PWM isn't uh, fried on the thing here. Gonna try to power it with a uh, 12 volt source just to see if it is getting any current or if the fan is working or not. Okay, so right now I'm gonna show you all my uh, jury rigged. This is like my testing board with that. Uh, it's basically just a 12 volt like AC wall board type thing and then it's plugged into this ghetto rig board. I was using this to test some like LED chips that I was going to experiment with, but kind of uh, lost track, or got sidetracked off that project indefinitely. So what I'm using it right now for is basically just uh, testing, it's just a good 12 volt source to test into. So I'm just gonna test this fan, and we're gonna make sure that the fan itself is busted, and it's not the PWM that's uh, busted on the board. If that's the case, I need to make like a manual switch, which a lot of people on the uh, on these Flash Forge printers have had to do. Just uh, mainly the main reason being, of course, is that it's uh, they don't usually come with a PWM on them. So okay, I'm gonna cut it off right about here, just so I have plenty of lead for the uh, DuPont connectors, and then get our wire strippers, cut those. All right, so. Let me get some tape real quick. I don't have to worry about this fan trying to go loose and go nuts. There we go. Good deal. And I'm just gonna use my little alligator clips. Hope I don't short anything out on this guy. Probably use doing this the wrong way. Oh, okay, good. Well, and uh, just to be sure, I'm gonna get my multimeter out. There we go. Let's focus over there. Let's make sure we're actually getting 12 volts at this real quick. Yep. I appear to... It's, oh, I have it backwards. Apparently green is neutral. Let's try it. Let's try fixing that. Okay, so the fan works. Huh. Alright. But, for some weird reason, whenever I see it printing, that fan is always off. So I think the PWM may be fried, so I'm going to have to inspect that, which is going to take a little longer than usual. Bit of a bummer. 
All right, so got some good news and some bad news here. What I did was I uh, went into Simplify 3D and told it to run the fan so I could get readings. Now I'm reading 24 volts at the contacts and the little uh, light is on. Yeah, for now, there's definitely some sort of break in the cabling, so I'm gonna do a few continuity tests on the multimeter. Uh, let me see where exactly the break is, and I'm glad I don't have I don't have a thing. The board itself isn't fried, so I don't have to do any sort of jury rigging, and I can have it shut off for the first couple of layers like it should. So, good deal. Oh, and also just had a uh, delivery come in for the uh, power bot. Got the uh, bigger belt as well as the third lead screw. Of course, I have the uh, pulley as well. It's in my little uh, parts department. So there we go, good deal. I'll go ahead and cut back once I have the uh, cable situation sorted out. All right, so wiring is coming along here. I went ahead and replaced the entire lead that uh, went from the actual uh, fan, or the cooling fan pin on the board to the actual pan pin here. And I got this DuPont connector, labeled it up for the uh, all three of the fans, of course, so so I can just quick disconnect all of them for ser for quick servicing. So should be pretty convenient there. Kind of wish the hot end uh, thermocouples as well as the uh, the actual whatever the other things are, <laughs> the heating elements. Yeah, there we go. There were both there were qu quick disconnect too. That make things a bit easier, but. They're kind of this weird cabling and I really don't want to mess with it. The only other thing I really ran into is this particular uh, fan duct that I printed out. It is meant for the newer version of the Creator Pro which has this like special bracket to attach it to the side. Which uh, fortunately the guy who made this model also made the, uh, basically recreated the adapter plate that is supposed to interface between these two screw holes and uh, this one here as well as the two uh, screw holes on the actual fan itself because I was wondering how am I going to be able to fashion that on without using zip ties so thank goodness uh, that is on there. I'll of course put the uh, links to the this model and the adapter plate in the description for anyone interested here but uh, right now I'm just going to get everything up and running without the fan and print off that part and then of course attach the fan on there. But. Uh, the only other thing I really have to do, of course, is just uh, terminate the ends on the fans themselves and put the hot end assembly, or the, yeah, the hot end extruder assembly back together. Oh, and for those wondering uh, how to crimp these DuPont connectors properly, I recommend getting these iSwiss crimpers. Yeah, let's see here. SN01BM is the model number for these particular sets. I also have a bigger one that can do standard uh, crimp connections for uh, larger gauges of wiring, but this one is good for those these DuPont and these other smaller JST style connect or crimp connectors here, which definitely make uh, make connections look a lot more professional compared to just soldering things together. This definitely looks pretty pro. Need to get this guy replaced here. I don't know. The weird thing is like with this printer is like this particular motor. The only time I really used it when I first used the printer, like the other side's gotten a lot more use, but there's like no fatiguing or burning on any of the contacts. And I think this started hap only really happening when I stopped using this uh, right end of the ex the actual hot end or the right the hot end there, because I really don't do any dual. Haven't done too much dual extrusion. Just kind of tried it out when I was printing out parts for the PowerBot, but that's really about it. Haven't really prefer, gotten it nailed down, but I do want to try it in the near future here once I get another printer uh, set up so I, that's actually reliable so I can actually, you know, s screw around with this one. <laughs> now, what I'm going to show you all how to do is how to terminate these DuPont connector ends here. So, so I got the actual, uh, the other two fans mounted on the printer. Of course, this has to wait because I have to print that other piece off, but I'm going to go ahead and terminate it anyway because I have it cut to size at least. Now this, uh, the, there's two different types of DuPont connector types here. There's the uh, male and of course the female ends. The male end I'm putting on the positive on the fan side because I did it uh, female on the live side just to uh, prevent any sort of shortings while the uh, printer was in oper or was powered on and I needed to service it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get them crimped. Now this here, these are these little spiked ends. They need to line up with the uh, little rounded edge part, not the part poking out or else uh, it's not going to crimp correctly. And of course, the uh, little spikes at the bottom of the connector, that's where the sheathing will go into, and then slightly above it, there's like two little tabs, and that's where the actual bare wire will go into. 
So you just have to, you barely have to strip it to get it in or get it to fit in these. And of course, you don't have to go too far past these two little tabs down here, or else it'll interfere with the rest of the connector operation. So yeah, just have to bear it, line it up. Okay, neato. All right, pretty good connects. And this, of course, I just do it with the other end. It's exactly the same process, just with the uh, female connector instead of the male connector. I think the easiest way to do it really is to line it up in the tool first. Okay, so got both ends taken care of here. And of course, it doesn't really matter which way I put them in. They just, this side with the uh, this little square needs to line up with this little blank area. That's about the only requirement you got. And just, I use my little pliers just to bring it up into the little detent. There we go. We got ourselves one connector and that's about it. And of course, the reason I do both male and female like this is just to make sure you don't mix up any polarities or flip them around. It's just a lot easier to reinstall them. You don't have to really worry about which side you have them on, of course. But that's really about it for that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that other piece printed out and install that on there. And I'll, I'll cut back to the uh, printer room where this should be running. Okay, and the uh, this new bracket plate that has been uh, printed out went pretty well, pretty easy. It just has these like little, uh, just use some of these M3 welds that I've shown in previous videos and just put those in there. And of course, the uh, everything seems to go up pretty good. I did have to use some of this uh, Ikea like sandpaper tape that I have floating around here somewhere. So right here. Yeah, this stuff's pretty neat. I think I got it for like five bucks a roll, and it's uh, like the thickest tape I have. And of course, it has this cool sandpaper surface, so it's, it's decent for some projects here. Another cool thing that you probably wouldn't consider buying from Ikea is their hole saw kit. Bought this for about five bucks. It works surprisingly well. I don't know if it'll work good for metal just because of the low teeth count, but it works great for wood, and for the price, you really can't beat it. The chuck is pretty decent too. Uh, there's no, it's per, it's tight, no issues with it loosening up in the middle of use. So definitely, I uh, recommend picking one up if you're looking for a cheap little hole saw kit, because they can get pretty expensive. And of course, the reason the printer is on its side while I was assembling it is because I forgot to put the back plate on. It's one thing I always usually forget to do whenever I'm working on this printer, but everything is ready to go. And of course, this quick connect Dupont connector. It's freaking amazing. I love it, and I should be a lot better for whenever I uh, jam up or have the printer jams. And of course, compared to the older fan mount, I do have access to these two screws, so I do not have to uninstall this if I had to clear a jam in either a uh, hot end or extruder. So that's definitely a good upgrade, and I'm pretty excited to use or to get this in action here. But of course, uh, next up we will be doing the uh, third lead screw on this. On the PowerBot printer, that um, so you have the uh, the so I'm gonna have one on the back here, which should fix the bed leveling issue I've had, where it's uh, yeah, like I showed you in one of the previous videos, it is pretty uh, pretty wonky, pretty terrible. So that's uh, gonna be exciting to fix that. Just gonna mount it back here alongside of this uh, eight millimeter rod. But uh, yep, I'm just designing the last part to be printed out for that. And of course, I do have another piece I need, or a couple more pieces I need to print before I start on that. So that's coming up here soon. Just wanna, of course, thank you all for watching here. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing and have a great day.